Hey guys, Ace from Noises Bound here, and today I'm going to bring you another video game collection video. Now I know the last one I did ran kind of long. Uh, live and learn. So from now on, I'm basically just going to showcase uh, one console per video. Kind of keep things short and sweet. I know I probably bore you guys talking for 16 minutes about video games. Um, so let's get started. First off, I actually want to do uh, sort of an update since the last uh, video that I made. And first off, I'm going to show off some uh, NES games that I actually picked up at a local uh, thrift store. Starting off with baseball. That, that's, that, that's it, it's just baseball. It's an interesting game. Uh, we also got WWF WrestleMania from Acclaim. It's pretty cool. And skate or die. So yeah, just want to give you an update on my NES collection that's slowly growing. Total of four now. And in case you haven't seen my vlog from before, uh, we have an update for our Super Nintendo collection with Tetris Attack, donated to us by at KiskiFace on Twitter. And one of the biggest updates is my Sega Voltron is complete and complete with. A game that should be in everyone's collection, Virtual Fighter on 32X. And when I say complete, I mean fully complete. I actually got a hold of a working Sega CD, so the Sonic CD review is a go. And all components work, so this is a fully functional Sega Voltron. Yes, I'm going to keep calling it the Sega Voltron. And on to the star of the show, or star of this particular video. You guys might recognize this with from the how-to video I did earlier on how to replace the system board battery, which is here. That's right, today I'm going to show off my Sega Saturn collection, which is a tad small, so this video might run a little short, but that probably doesn't matter that much. And actually, I need to go grab the controller because I forgot. Sega Saturn is an unfortunate console. The system itself is actually quite underrated. A lot of people say you know, it's not nearly as powerful as the PlayStation, and in some areas, you're they're correct. For some reason, even with the 32x going uh, a lot of three going in the kind of 3D correct direction, Sega decided not to focus on 3D with the Sega Saturn, and instead made sure that it had basically um, a very powerful 2D processor. Meanwhile, the PlayStation, you know, Sony created the PlayStation and kind of focused and went to a tool more towards the 3D direction. So, in instances of things that uses a lot of, you know, hand-drawn sprites and stuff, the Sega Saturn is actually better at that than the PlayStation. But the world was kind of moving away from that and towards more 3D stuff, so the Sega Saturn kind of flopped. First, I would like to talk about the pretty nice Saturn controller, which is very similar to the Genesis 6 button controller with the addition of an O and R button with a nice click to it. Um, controller's pretty, pretty nice. It is not quite as good as this, the original Sega Genesis controller, which is pretty much the best controller ever made. But it gets the job done and it's still pretty comfortable to hold in the hand. Now this Sega Saturn was actually Pinko's, um, but it was added to my collection when we got married, you know, that whole communal property and all that stuff. First game we have here is Sonic 3D Blast, which is kind of an unfortunate game, but I'll go more into that when I get to it on the uh, on my Sonic retrospective. <clears throat> Next up we have Virtua Cup, which is always fun in the arcades. Unfortunately, I don't have a gun to be able to play this effectively with, like you can play it with a controller, but no one wants to just move the cursor around on the screen with a controller when you have a gun. And the funny thing is, I would need a gun and a CRT TV because light guns on these old consoles do not work on uh, LCD TVs. Next on the list is Nights Into Dreams. Which I'm told is a very fun game. Uh, we've actually tried the, the Wii version, which was also pretty fun. Um, unfortunately, I don't have 
the Sega Saturn 3D controller, which was basically designed for this game, so I can't really effectively play it either, so I need to get a hold of one of those. Next up, we have the original Tomb Raider on Sega Saturn, which I think was one of the biggest selling games on the PlayStation. Um, as far as I know, the Saturn game runs just as well. Um, like I said, you know, the 3D processor on the Sega Saturn is not quite as good as the one on the PlayStation, but Tomb Raider seems to run just fine. Last but not least is Fighters Mega Mix, which I didn't even know existed until I watched Classic Game Room. And I never even heard of Fighting Vipers before, you know, watching Classic Game Room. But I had to have this game because, you know, it mixes Virtual Fighter 2 and Fighting Vipers and runs on the Virtual Fighter 2 engine, which is really good on the Sega Saturn. And it's got tons of characters from both the Virtual Fighter and Fighting Vipers universe, plus a bunch of hidden characters. Like, for instance, you can fight as the car from the Daytona games. I mean, seriously, how can you not want to own this game? And this is also the only Saturn game right now that we have that is fully complete with, you know, instruction manual, and case, and all that stuff. So that pretty much rounds out the Sega Saturn collection. I hope you enjoyed this video, and look out for more.